Dan Horde inside the Cincinnati locker room. The Bearcats getting set for their big matchup tomorrow afternoon against undefeated Kentucky. And I am chatting with one of the heroes last night in the overtime win over Purdue, Coriante DeBerry, who had a career high 13 points in that ball game. You played 26 minutes. That's more than the previous three games combined. How exhausted were you at the end of that game? Well, in the game, I was, I was really, really tired, but I know my team needed me, needed me the most um, when Octavius got thrown out the game. So I had to put away being tired to side to figure out to help my team how to win a game. And you certainly did. Now, were you able to get to sleep or were you too, too excited about your performance in the victory? Well, I was so tired that I just fell asleep when I, when I, when I got back to the hotel. So it wasn't easy for me to fall asleep being so tired from the game. Corey, when Octavius got ejected from the game, about 16 minutes to go in regulation, what did you say to yourself? Basically, I had to figure out how to come through to help my team win the game because Octavius is a big part of our team and I was next in line in that position. So I had to figure out how can, what, what, what things I can do to help my team win the game and how I'm going to figure it out. And that's what, I, that's, what, that's what I went out there and that's what I did. Purdue had two seven-footers. Did you think going into the game that you were going to play a significant role? <laughs> yeah, I know I had to keep them around the basket. So that's why I had to focus on going in tonight, last night's game and just try to do the best I can because we only, it was only me and Gary Clark left to do that. So I had to figure, I just had to figure it out. That's all I had to really had to, really had to do, just figure it out. You did it, you did it well and you avoided foul trouble. There were two really memorable baskets in the game. Troy Copain's basket at the buzzer to force overtime and then your basket in overtime that gave Cincinnati the lead for good. On the radio, I said you looked like a ballerina. <laughs> Uh, do you practice shots like that? Where did that one come from? Well, the last time I hit that shot, it was in high school. So <laughs> I don't, I just, when I got the ball, I just looked to score. And I just found the open, saw the open, saw the open spot, and I went to there and I scored and then went in. And that's just what it was. What a great feeling, right? Yeah, it's a good feeling. There was also a play in the second half where you got the ball about midcourt and took off like a runaway train. You eventually drew a foul from a kid who's 5'10", 188 pounds. Could you see the, could you see the fear in his eyes as you were closing in? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I thought, well, I, I thought he was going, they was going to call the charge for sure because he was, he was sure there waiting for me, so. I had to figure out to make it seem like it was a it was a blocking foul, so I didn't I didn't go straight into him. I went kind of on the side to finish to try to try to finish the layup, and they called a blocking foul. Thank God, so <laughs> <laughs> it worked out just fine. All right, I think a lot of Bearcat fans know that you are known for having gigantic hands. Even before you got to Cincinnati, the assistant coaches were telling me, "Wait till you see this kid. He's got the biggest hands we've ever seen." Let's do a quick comparison. Your hand and my hand, ready? Megan, do we have a good view of uh, the hand comparison there? All right, so how young were you when you could first palm a basketball? Ooh, I was probably about, a man's basketball probably was about, I say 13. Yeah, 13 years old, I could palm a basketball. I read a story once that said that when you were a kid, you, could, you had to play baseball barehanded because you could not find a glove that fits your hand. Is that yeah, a true story? When, yeah, when I was in middle school, uh, I had gym and some of the activities we do, uh, we do basketball, football, baseball, kickball, and all that, like all the sports in gym class. So on baseball days, I couldn't, I, I, I just love playing outfield, but on baseball days, I had to get, I, I couldn't get a, a glove to fit my hand. So I said, I said, I'm gonna just go barehanded. He's like, are you sure? Are you sure? I said, yeah. He said, it's gonna hurt. I said, I'm fine. I, I caught uh, three, three uh, out balls with my hand. Yeah, so it worked out, it worked out fine. 
three fly balls barehanded because he couldn't find a glove that fit. All right, let's look ahead to tomorrow's matchup against 35-0 and Kentucky. Three guys in the starting lineup that are 6'10 or taller. Another guy that comes off the bench that's 7 feet tall. Do you look at the key to this game being how Cincinnati's big guys perform against Kentucky's big guys? Um, only thing I look at it going into tomorrow's game is we're a tough team and we don't back down to no one, so we just going to go out there and give it our best effort. You've got a chance to make history. Is that going through your mind and your teammates' minds? It definitely is, and we're looking forward to tomorrow's game. Was I, I know you had a game in uh, junior college where you were 12 for 12 from the field with 10 dunks, so that was a tremendous performance, but was last night's game the highlight of your sporting life so far? Yeah, it's more the the after feeling of winning the first NCAA tournament game made me realize how much it, it feels good. So, yeah. Well, it'll feel even better if you can knock off Kentucky. Congratulations on a tremendous tremendous performance against Purdue. Best of luck against UK. Thank you. All right, that is Coriante DeBerry. Continued coverage from the NCAA tournament right here on Bearcats TV.